Hey everybody, this is Phoenix Down, and welcome back to Let's Play Chrono Trigger. In the last episode, we defeated Yakra the 13th and patched things up between Marley and her dad. And in today's episode, we're gonna start things off by talking to Fiona here over at Fiona's Villa. If you remember, she's the woman that's been trying to revive the forest that this desert had swallowed up. So let's talk to her. My husband Marco is finally home! I I'm so relieved! Don't worry, I'm home for good. So yeah, now that the war is over, all the men are returning home. A lot of the different towns have different dialogue to say now. If you haven't already seen it at this point. The desert monsters are draining the life out of the soil here. This mystic seedling could revive the forest, but I can't plant it. Too many hungry monsters lurking about. So yeah, if you remember, back in the Kingdom of Zeal, there was that one woman that had that sapling that the Guru of Life, Melchior, gave to her, and the Queen told her to burn it, and you had to decide whether or not to tell her to burn it or to secretly plant it. In order to trigger this event, you have to tell her to secretly plant that, and then somehow that seedling will uh, survive for like almost 13,000 years, or whatever, and, and Fiona will eventually obtain it. So in order to do that, well, you do that, and it opens up this hole in the ground here, the Sunken Desert, which is our next destination. It's a little mini dungeon, so let's enter this little sinkhole. And enter this does this uh, swirling pit. This is a- uh, it's really hard to navigate this place. You, If you're walking just normally, you don't even move at all, so you have to press the run button to navigate. And we have some new monsters, both of the monsters we can fight here. We got Mojavors and Hexapods. If you attack the he Hexapods directly, you do very minimal damage. I'm gonna have Magus cast Ice too. But yeah, I had Ayla attack just to kind of demonstrate that. Their defense is really high. I got Magus equipped with the uh, Prism Specs, by the way, to boost his attack power. The enemies here are weak to water and shadow elemental attacks, so either or will work. I chose Ice too because it costs less MP. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to move around this dungeon and I'm going to wipe out all the monsters since it's all the same and I will meet you back at the center. Alright, and I clear, cleared out all the monsters. So we go over here and let's pick up some treasure. Pretty much every treasure chest down here is guarded by some hexapods. And there's a couple other encounters in the center of the room. Here we got a full ether. Down in this corner we have... An elixir, and yeah, sometimes it's a little difficult to line yourself up with a treasure chest. And here we get an Aeon suit, a little bit late in the game for that. You can, since you can come to this place so much earlier than uh, other uh, areas in the Faded Hour, you know, s some of the equipment isn't quite what up to the standards we're expecting. So let's go into the next area. Go down here and, oh, something's shaking. Yeah, Megan's just like, what's going on? Holy crap, what is that thing? It looks kind of like, uh, kind of reminds me of the lower half of Zombor. They make forest into desert! What a pain. Yeah, I hear you, Magus. So let's, anyway, let's get up and out of the desert, because uh, when the ground shakes from this monster, your party will actually take a little bit of damage, somewhere between 50 to poss possibly even 100 HP worth of damage from the rumbling, depending on how much... Uh, they're on the in the sand, I guess. I'm gonna wait for the creature to uh, pop up right in front of me. As far as I could tell, as long as you're out of the oh crap, we're still taking damage, I think. So come on, get a little closer, buddy. That's you're not supposed to do that to me. Yeah, it's damaging me no matter what. I best I, I may as well just go and track him down then. Where are you at? There he is. All right, and it's time for a boss battle. Against a slowly forming Zombor clone. The Retinite. Alright, what I want to do is have Megas cast Ice 2. You cannot hurt this guy if you do not hit him with water attacks first. I'm going to have Ayla charm from its core. And have Frog do Leap Slash against the top part. There's three segments to it. And we got a speed tab. Alright, the other two segments don't have anything to steal from. And the creature will absorb, the two halves will absorb from the core. And once the core is gone, it becomes increasingly more aggressive. So you want to defeat it before that happens. I'm going to have Megas cast Ice 2 again. Frog go for a Leap Slash here. And I'm going to have Ayla do Cat Attack. 
There aren't really that many dual attacks with this party that I can really exploit, so the individual attacks will do fine, though. The two halves don't have that much HP. Alright, we're doing some decent amount of damage. I'll have Magus cast Ice 2 on his next turn to soften him up again, or harden him up, I should say, in this case. Go for a Leap Slash and a Cat Attack. You want to defeat the top half first because it has an attack that can drain HP from you to recharge itself, and it'll take almost 300 HP out per hit from that. So it's considerably more dangerous. And again, if we're fast enough, wipe out the two segments before the core is expired, and uh, it'll be an easy time. It's not quite as bad as, say, having the Mother Brain go on a rampage by destroying all the uh, displays, but it does make the fight a lot harder when the core is gone. It becomes a lot more offensive oriented, it becomes faster, it attacks more frequently. And we defeated the top half, alright. Well done, Ayla. Yeah, I'll just move the uh, text up onto the top half. Little earthquake attack, uh, nothing to worry about. I'm gonna have them do the cat attack and the leap slash before I have Magus do ice two because the defense power will increase over time as, as you attack it more and more which is why I'm reapplying the ice two spell so there we go and the core will pretty much absorb just about any other element attack so don't even bother trying to hit it with other spells ah crap I guess that one uh, eats you too that was unpleasant. But we'll be alright. Go Frog with the Leap Slash! Cast Ice 2 once again to, soft, to harden this guy up. I keep thinking soften, but normally you want to soften him up, but not in this case. Magus is skirting uh, danger just a little bit, but we should be fine. All right, we defeat the lower half. Just gonna go for a regular physical attack against the core. See if we can defeat it before it runs away. Because the core will run away, exactly. But all right, we got 2,600 experience points, 100 tech points, 2,000 G, not bad, not bad. <sighs> all right, but well, yeah, Magus didn't have a whole lot to say about that. But anyway, now that the retinite is gone, let's check out our, uh, our treasure here as soon as I can line Frog up to open it. The stupid swirling sand there. We got a full ether down here. Get a little closer. Line your. <laughs> this is this is a real pain the, because the ground is constantly moving. It's like that. What is that? That dungeon in Final Fantasy V, the uh, the the desert. I can't think of the name off the top of my head. But here we get a muscle ring boosts your attack power, your power stat. I think it's like six points there. We got an Aeon Helm, which is pretty much useless to us now. Go over here, get closer. We got a Hyper Ether. Yeah, it's best to defeat the Retinite as quickly as possible, 5000 G, and, and uh, do the treasure hunting after the boss battle because of how the party takes damage every time he rumbles the area. We got a full tonic there. So, okay, I believe that's all the treasure. Let's get out of here. And we move up this way, and after fighting the boss, there is another uh, treasure in here. We got ourselves a power tab, all right. So I'm going to uh, give some tabs to Ayla. I'm going to give that speed tab to Ayla as well. Go get the power tab to Ayla. Boost her attack power again. I'm going to boost her speed because I'm going to want Ayla to be faster in an upcoming area. She's going to be doing a lot of stealing in the near future. But alright, we defeated the uh, Retinite. But the, the side quest isn't quite over yet. I need to switch out my party. I'm going to put Megus back in the end of time and switch him out for Robo. You need Robo for this... Uh, sequence to continue. So let's go and report to Fiona that the uh, job has been successful. Thank you for routing the beasts. Unfortunately, it'll take centuries to revive the forest. I wish I could live long enough to see my wish come true. You can come for me when the job is done. Wait, Robo, what are you saying? May I stay behind and help Fiona? Uh, well... I mean, I guess you're the only one that can live for over... A few hundred years, so, uh, alright, I suppose we can do that. So now, Robo is now moving around the desert, 
cultivating the land to revive the forest. You can talk to uh, Fiona again, just get a little bit more insight here. With Robo's help, it seems my dream may finally come true. How can I ever thank you? Well, you can bring this side quest to an end for us, I suppose. But anyway, Robo's there. He, he has different animations each time you uh, enter the area. He's growing seeds, he's plowing the land. There's also one where he's a scarecrow. But anyway, let's jump into the epoch and uh, see what this has uh, done to the present. If you remember the present, this was just one big empty desert space. And holy crap, wow, they... They've certainly sown the seeds of their labor, that's for sure. And the forest is really grown. Nice, well done guys, well done. The Dor Dorino village is still gone, I'm not sure what happened to that. I assumed back in the original timeline that the desert was what caused it to uh, basically disappear and doesn't exist in the present. But uh, I guess they got overtaken by the forest instead in uh, this timeline. They don't really bother to explain what happens to Dorino village. But anyway, we got Fiona Shrine. Kinda reminds me of the cathedral a little bit. Here we give thanks to Fiona and Robo for replanting the forest 400 years ago. Okay, well that's nice. The remains of the lofty Robo are enshrined in the inner sanctum. Okay, good to know, good to know. Oh, and we got, uh, we got some items here we can buy. We can buy some headgear. We got the sight cap, which prevents chaos. I know last time I think I said it was darkness, or... When at whichever episode that was, my mistake on that one. We got the memory cap that prevents lock. The time cap that prevents stop and slow, that one's a bit more obvious. And the vigil hat, which protects against all status ailments, but you know, we got the re we got prism helms and stuff like that. We don't need to buy any of these, but it's there. If you do this side quest earlier, it's a lot more valuable to you there. And there's Robo, all right. Too bad we didn't bring Luca along. She'd be able to patch him up in no time. But yeah, he's definitely, uh, he's, he's showing some wear and tear, that's for sure. So, Alright, well, let's hit the power button. Button. He's booting up. Systems reactivated. Where am I? Ah. Frog, how nice to see you. For you, it was a quick hop, but for me, 400 long years have passed. The effort was worth it. The forest has grown back. Now let us celebrate our 400th year reunion. So here we get ourselves a little cutscene. The whole gang's together having a nice little campfire. Even Megus is invited. So yeah, this, I, this is the reason why I decided to save this for now, because after this... Pretty much all that's left is Black Omen and uh, Lavos, aside from like a few loose ends that I'll take care of soon. After 400 years of experience, I have come to think that Lavos may not be responsible for the gates. What do you mean? Yeah, really, I thought Lavos was the cause of it all. I have come to think that someone or something wanted us to see all this. The different events over time that we have witnessed, it is almost as if some entity wanted to relive its past. Ayla, no. When people die, elders say, see whole life pass by. Yeah, I guess that is true, isn't it? Exactly. Tis true that mortals do relive their most profound memories before death claimeth them. Yet those memories most often are sad ones. Thinking things like, if only I had done this, or I shouldn't have done that, triggers unpleasant old memories. Will that happen when our time comes? Probably. Who knows? Is there a point you'd, in time you'd want? Is there a point in time you'd want to return to Luca? No, not really. You're hesitating there, Luca. I'm suspicious there. I'm sorry. Was that something I shouldn't have asked? It's okay. It's just something I don't like to think about too much. Yeah, I guess that makes sense. It's a personal area. Lavos plays an integral role in the fortunes of this entity. So, who is this entity? Yeah, really, exactly. We're talking entity this, entity, entity that, but don't really know exactly who or what this thing is. But okay, 
It is unknown whose memories these are. It may be something beyond our comprehension. Our journey may come to an end when we finally discover the identity of the entity. Shall we turn in for the night? Questions, questions. How are you supposed to sleep when you're thinking about something like that, really? But I guess everyone else has, doesn't have a problem with that, except for Luca, apparently. I guess she is the brainiest of the bunch, so I guess she'd be the one thinking about this kind of stuff. You can't really do anything with the characters here. They're just, they're all sleeping. But if you come over here, we have ourselves a little gate. A mysterious red gate. This is, this is new. Luca, what are you doing? She's up to something, that's for sure, and she doesn't want to bring the rest of the group along for this ride. So this is a little, uh, bit into Luca's own personal backstory. Did I make it back to that moment? So you go over here and read this paper. We're ten years in the past. Dad promised to go hiking with me, but blew it off again due to his work. I hate science. I loathe it. So anyway, do not take the that doorway on the lower left-hand side. Do not take that. You will trigger a sequence of events, and you won't be in a position to do anything about it. If you go down here and enter the kitchen, there's another note here. The password is the name of my lovely wife. Use it in an, in an emergency. Tabin. So uh, you couldn't be bothered to write the name of your wife down so that people would be like, I don't know who she is, but okay. Wife. No, that didn't work. Then there's nothing up there. That's Luca's mom's room, but it's empty. You come down here, though. Ooh, there's a big machine here. What is this thing? Tabin says to keep away from it, but it's so dusty. I'll just... No, you shouldn't fumble with that, with things you don't understand. Dear me! My skirt, it's... I'm stuck! Luca, Luca, help! Oh, and there's little Luca. Little purple-haired girl. I can't pull it out! And it's been triggered, oh no! Luca, enter the password! Stop the machine! So now, if you noticed, uh, Luca's mom's been talking there, you see your name there, it's Laura. So you go to this sparkly thing here. You press L, A, R, and A to stop the machine. Now this changes history for Luca personally. Thank goodness, mommy. Because uh, if you notice, Luca's mom is not does not does not move around very often. It's because her legs had been damaged from this incident. And in doing this, we've basically saved her. You know, Luca's kind of uh, got mixed feelings about that. Apparently, I don't know if she's relieved or upset that she was selfish enough to do that. Anyway, this note is the same as before, but if you go over here, we have a new one. I feel like I've learned something. I'll study machines now. There'll be no more accidents around here. Now, if you fail to save Luca's mom, there'll be like three or four other papers around here talking about how the doctors say she'll never walk again, and, you know, and so on and so forth. But anyway, we our business here is done, so let's go back to the present. Jump back into the mysterious red gate. Not sure how Luca pulled that off, but it's a nice little touch. I like this little detail. Definitely a more uh, personal exploitation of time travel this time. And apparently Robo woke up. I guess maybe he wasn't even asleep in the first place for all we know. Luca, you've got a kind heart. You're always thinking of others. So what's this? This is for you. It's a piece of amber I created using the sap from a tree in my forest. It took 400 years and a lot of pressure to make. I hope you'll find it useful. And we got the green dream. It's an accessory that caused, that casts auto life on, a, on your character one time per battle, I believe. Robo, you're so sweet. <laughs> I like that little, just that little beep beep that Robo does there. But all right, well, why don't we go and uh, swing by, now that we've done that, why don't we go and swing by Luca's house and uh, check up on her mom, see what's changed. As soon as I find a place to park the epoch. So let's go in here. And Tabin says the same thing he usually says, even though Luca's right here. Dad, I'm right here again. Put on the sunshades, you can't see, or take them off for that matter. And look at that, oh wow, Luca's mom is up and, go, up and about. What a beautiful day. I'll finish the housework and take a walk. Nice. All right. I, you don't take don't take those legs for granted. But all right, guys. On that note, next time on Let's Play Chrono Trigger, we're going to tie up a few loose ends, a few odds and ends that I haven't done yet. Just some things on the side, collect a couple items, 
do battle with Speccio one more time, and then we will finally begin the Black Omen. So this has been Phoenix Down, and I will see you guys next time.